Aemon Targaryen went through one of the most radical development shifts imaginable when two of his most character-defining incidents happened literally back-to-back. -back. Becoming Vhagar's dragon rider and losing his eye completely changed the course of his life and legitimately changed the course of Targaryen and even Westerosi history. These experiences couldn't not change who Aemon was and who he ultimately came to be. And although the depiction of these events differ in Fire and Blood and House of the Dragon, one key element of Aemon's rebirth as a one-eyed dragon rider is noticeably similar. In Fire and Blood, the description of this turning point is curiously distinct from House of the Dragon's version, and it goes like this. The cruelty of children is known to all. Prince Aegon Targaryen was 13, Princess Helena 11, Prince Aemon 10, and Prince Daeron 6. Both Aegon and Helena were dragon riders. Helena now flew Dreamfire, the she-dragon who had once carried Reyna, Magor the Cruel's Black Bride, whilst her brother Aegon's young Sunfire was said to be the most beautiful dragon ever seen upon the earth. Even Prince Daeron had a dragon, a lovely blue she-dragon named Tessarion, though he had yet to ride. Only the middle son, Prince Aemond, remained dragonless, but his grace had hopes of rectifying that, and had put forward the notion that perhaps the court might sojourn at Dragonstone after the funeral. A wealth of dragon's eggs could be found beneath the dragon mont, and several young hatchlings as well. Prince Aemond could have his choice, if the lad is bold enough. Even at ten, Aemond Targaryen did not lack for boldness. The king's jibe stung, and he resolved not to wait for Dragonstone. What did he want with some puny hatchling or some stupid egg? Right there at high tide was a dragon worthy of him. Vagar, the oldest, largest, most terrible dragon in the world. Even for a son of House Targaryen, there are always dangers in approaching a dragon, particularly an old, bad-tempered dragon who has recently lost her rider. His father and mother would never allow him to go near Vagar, Aemon knew, much less try to ride her. So he made certain they did not know, sliding from his bed at dawn whilst they slept and stealing down to the outer yard where Vagar and the other dragons were fed and stabled. The prince had hoped to mount Vagar in secrecy, but as he crept up to the dragon, a boy's voice rang out. You stay away from her. The voice belonged to the youngest of his half-nephews, Joffrey Valerian, a boy of three. Always an early riser, Joff had sneaked down from his bed to see his own young dragon, Tyraxes. Afraid that the boy would raise the alarm, Prince Aemon shouted at him to be quiet, then shoved him backward into a pile of dragon droppings. As Joff began to bawl, Aemon raced to Vagar and clambered up onto her back. Later, he would say that he was so afraid of being caught that he forgot to be frightened of being burned to death and eaten. Call it boldness, call it madness, call it fortune or the will of the gods or the caprice of dragons. Who can know the mind of such a beast? We do know this. Vagar roared, lurched to her feet, shook violently, then snapped her chains and flew. And the boy prince Aemon Targaryen became a dragon rider, circling twice around the towers of high tide before coming down again. But when he landed, Rhaenyra's sons were waiting for him. Joffrey had run to get his brothers when Aemon took to the sky, and both Jace and Luke had come to his call. The Valerian princelings were younger than Aemon. Jace was six, Luke five, Joff only three. But there were three of them, and they had armed themselves with wooden swords from the training yard. Now they fell on him with a fury. Aemon fought back, breaking Luke's nose with a punch then wrenching the sword from Joff's hands and cracking it across the back of Jace's head, driving him to his knees. As the younger boy scrambled to back away from him, bloody and bruised, the prince began to mock them, laughing and calling them the Strongs. Jace at least was old enough to grasp the insult. He flew at Aemon once again, but the older boy began pummeling him savagely, until Luke, coming to the rescue of his brother, drew his dagger and slashed Aemon across the face, taking out his right eye. By the time the stable boys finally arrived to pull apart the combatants, the prince was writhing on the ground, howling in pain, and Vagar was roaring as well. Afterward, King Viserys tried to make a peace, requiring each of the boys to tender an apology to his rivals on the other side. But these courtesies did not appease their vengeful mothers. Queen Alicent demanded that one of Lucerys Valerian's eyes should be put out, for the eye he had cost Aemond. Princess Rhaenyra would have none of that, but insisted that Prince Aemon should be questioned sharply until he revealed where he had heard her sons called Strongs. To so name them was tantamount to saying they were bastards, with no rights of succession, and that she herself was guilty of high treason. 
When pressed by the king, Prince Aemon said it was his brother Aegon who had told him they were strongs. And Prince Aegon said only, Everyone knows. Just look at them. King Viserys finally put an end to the questioning, declaring he would hear no more. No eyes would be put out, he decreed. But should anyone, man or woman or child, noble or common or royal, mock his grandsons as strongs again, their tongues would be pulled out with hot pincers. His grace further commanded his wife and daughter to kiss and exchange vows of love and affection, but their false smiles and empty words deceived no one but the king. As for the boys, Prince Aemon said later that he lost an eye and gained a dragon that day, and counted it a fair exchange. Now, although the events surrounding the entire incident are slightly tweaked, Aemon's experiences are pretty similar on both page and screen. And one particular idea that Aemon reiterates in both instances is that losing his eye and gaining a dragon was a fair exchange. Which is of specific interest because in both instances, it's very obviously not true. As far as Aemon's claim of a fair exchange actually goes, House of the Dragon really succeeds where fire and blood fails. It's interesting that George R. R. Martin chose to portray Aemon's behavior in this way in the novel, because it largely presents Aemon as a super badass child who simply accepts the risks that come along with his decisions. But House of the Dragon's presentation of this entire incident is far more informative, realistic, and emotionally resonant, as it's obvious that Aemon's claim that it was a fair exchange, because he lost an eye but gained a dragon, was essentially an attempt by a seriously traumatized child to alleviate a tense situation that has become dangerous for himself and the people that he loves. Of course, what also sticks out about this specific idea is that it is so obviously untrue. It's interesting that Aemon states that it was a fair exchange, because it wasn't an exchange at all. Although the two events happened back to back, it wasn't some kind of necessity to lose an eye in order to gain Vagar. He had already become Vagar's rider before he was injured, and the only reason this so-called price had to be paid was because his nephews didn't think he had the right to be Vagar's rider in the first place. But conceptually, it is still interesting that Aemon would characterize this experience as a fair price to be paid in exchange for a dragon, and it articulates a disturbing subtext of this entire event and a really unsettling aspect of Targaryen supremacy. Because Aemon's decision to claim Vagar as his own is portrayed as a pretty badass decision by a bold Targaryen, in both the book and the TV show. But the broader motivation behind that is typically completely ignored. Because yes, Aemon was undoubtedly incredibly brave to claim the biggest dragon in the world when he was barely in double digits. Brushing off his disabling mutilation is also frighteningly badass for a child of his age. But given what we know about the way that House Targaryen prizes dragons, and perhaps more importantly disregards those who don't have them, the ease with which Aemon goes after Vagar is also more than a little troubling. Because ultimately, Aemon losing his eye is merely correlated with him becoming a dragon rider. It's only caused by that, in the sense that his fight with the Strong Boys is triggered by his attempt to claim Vagar. However, Aemon very easily could have been maimed or even killed by simply approaching a dragon, and yet he chose to do so anyway. And the thought that an extremely young child has learned to value having a dragon over his own life is extremely concerning, and an incredibly frightening indictment into House Targaryen's value system as a whole. Yes, it is entirely believable that Aemon didn't fully grasp the risks of what he was doing. But the fact that he had already been pushed to the point where having a dragon was worth risking his own life to him is a profoundly disturbing reflection of Targaryen culture, and was especially ironic given what was about to happen within the family overall. But Fire and Blood and House of the Dragon also do a spectacular job of communicating that. Regardless of what Aemon actually said, he never believed that gaining Vagar was a fair exchange for losing his eye. Because, as soon as Viserys is gone and Aemon is face to face with Luke, he demands Luke's eye as repayment for his own. It's interesting and more than a little strange that a great deal of viewers and readers think that Aemon somehow got what was coming to him, or that losing his eye was his own fault because he got jumped by the strong boys. Obviously, the majority of audience members do not see any of the green characters as protagonists. But the notion that a child is somehow deserving of losing a body part and becoming permanently disabled is frankly a little insane, and is clearly a way overshot rationalization to excuse the perceived protagonists when they did something that was objectively horrific. And in a sense, 
Eamon's statement about an eye for a dragon being a fair exchange makes that rationalization easier, because it makes it seem like he himself acknowledges that this was a required price to pay and he was willing to pay it. Yes, he was willing to pay for a dragon with his body or even his life. But a dragon didn't take Eamon's eye. Luke did. Of course. While the presumption that Eamon somehow deserved what he got is a brutal and ridiculous way of excusing something horrible, Luke was still a young child when this happened, and thus his understanding of what he was doing was very limited. Ironically, Eamon demanding Luke's eye as repayment for Eamon's loss would have been unfair, simply because Eamon had a much deeper understanding of what he was asking for and what it meant than Luke did when he mutilated Eamon. But still, this literal eye-for-an-eye demand offers a great amount of insight into Eamon as a character. When Eamon lost his eye, he tried to defuse the situation by equating that loss to the gain of Vagar. But the fact that he instantly demands retribution from Luke as soon as he can actually demand it, without consequence, really illustrates that he always understood that the two were completely unrelated. And it shows that he has spent half of his life swallowing this horrible injustice because he had no other choice. There is something painfully ironic about the fact that Aemond risked his life to claim Vagar, the most powerful dragon in the world. And he then immediately had to accept something brutally unjust because, even though Vagar arguably gave him the most raw power of any single person on the planet, Viserys was still king and he simply chose Luke over him. The day that Aemond claimed Vagar and lost his eye was a watershed moment for his character, for the Targaryens, and for the Dance of the Dragons but a great deal of the subtext behind it is either completely missed or intentionally overlooked. The initial book version of events left many readers interpreting Aemon Targaryen as an unhinged, borderline feral badass who could walk off losing his eye without another thought. House of the Dragon humanized this experience in an incredibly thoughtful way, and showed that Aemon was willing and capable of swallowing his own trauma for the sake of his mother. But both of these interpretations disregard some of the most vital aspects of Aemond as a character and what this ordeal really says about him. He was willing to risk his life in order to gain a dragon, and yet the driving force behind that choice isn't looked at with the kind of critical eye that it deserves. It is seen as a sign of Aemond's boldness rather than a signal of the incredibly toxic culture that has been built up within House Targaryen which would lead a child to see their lives as worthless without a dragon. And most importantly, it ignores that Aemon's rationalization that an eye is a fair price to pay for a dragon is just that. A rationalization. It's not something that he ever believed or felt was true. Which is understandable because it objectively isn't true. It's something that he said to let Viserys, Rhaenyra, and every adult who wanted to ignore the abject horror of what had happened to him off the hook. It's an excuse that he offered because he rightfully deduced that if he didn't give them that excuse, then it would be he or someone he cared about who would suffer the consequences of his unwillingness to look the other way. And unfortunately, many members of the audience have taken this easy out for themselves as well. Aemond created this false equivalency because he was confronted with a situation that he could not get justice from. And plenty of readers and viewers have accepted this lie as truth because it makes it easier to keep the perceived protagonists in an unproblematic box. It would be much harder to perceive characters like Rhaenyra or the Strong Boys as outright heroes if the inhumanity of Aemon taking the blame for his own maiming so as to not be victimized further was truly recognized. But ultimately, that excuse doesn't hold any weight because it is so obvious that Aemon always knew it was a lie. If Aemond wasn't keenly aware of how inhumanely he had been treated, and if he didn't have nearly a decade of animosity built up as a result of that injustice, then ironically the Dance of the Dragons may have never even happened. Or at least, it may not have gone down the way that it did. However, things did happen that way, and every participant in the Dance of the Dragons was either forced to or very willingly embraced the wrong that was done to Aemond, including Aemond himself. But that doesn't mean that the audience should do the same. But what do you think? Did Aemon truly believe that an eye for a dragon was a fair exchange? Leave your comments and opinions below, and if you're interested in more content like this, like and subscribe.